everyone and thank you so much for joining me today. The topic of our webinar today is going beyond tests and exams. So let's talk about authentic assessments. When we start thinking about course design and curriculum development, we always think about these questions. What is the best way to assess student learning? We always think about whether it should be done through tests and uh, high stakes exams. Or another question that we often ask ourselves when developing courses is how to deal with uh, student cheating. And it is especially relevant for online learning. Another question that we often ask ourselves, at least we should be asking this question to ourselves, is how to boost student engagement. Student engagement is very important, especially when we talk about online classes, because uh, one of the complaints that students have about online classes is that it feels like they're on, uh, on their own, there is no community, and that can be a, a real problem for, for the students. Student engagement is an important question. And another question that I don't know whether many faculty really ask it this, the same way, but it is basically how to integrate assessments without actually calling them assessments. It's just kind of a sneaky way to incorporate assessments without making our students afraid of them. What is an authentic assessment? It is a type of ass assessment that is integrated in your course curriculum and it becomes a central part of your learning units. And some examples of authentic assessments may include discussions and group activities, research projects, lab work, reports, also low stakes testing, of course, and capstones. This is just some example of ass assessments that additionally, we may not call them as assessments, but basically anything that engages students, gives your students an opportunity to practice concepts that they're learning in your course is uh, any type type of activities that ask students to evaluate, uh, apply, synthesize, create. This is all assessments because, well, it is an opportunity for your students to practice. For you, it is an opportunity to assess and evaluate whether your students are learning the concepts that they should be learning in the course and how they're progressing, whether they're falling behind and maybe you need to incorporate some additional activities for those students. So it is a way to assess your students' knowledge and learning. Well, and sometimes I do hear this question, why do we, why do we even need to focus on authentic assessment? And what's wrong with just tests and final exams or, you know, midterm and final exams? Well, there is nothing wrong with incorporating tests, but they should be in addition to other types of activities that you would have in your course. And basically incorporating authentic assessment helps minimize cheating in your online classes, boost a student engagement and participation, engage students, it helps those activities help engage students in active learning application and evaluation. They help promote critical thinking and problem solving. And of course, they build a community, a thriving community in your online classes. So these are the advantages of incorporating authentic assessment, those discussions, projects, capstones that I was talking about. And again, they I'm not saying that they should replace tests and exams, but I do want to encourage everyone to think about those types of assignments and activities as an opportunity for your students to practice, to apply, to evaluate new concepts, to create, construct their new knowledge. So it is an opportunity for your students to learn. And for you, it is an opportunity to better assess their learning. My favorite type of assessment is Sneaky assessments. Sneaky assessments are tasks the students don't realize are teaching them something. And examples of such sneaky assessments can be 
short quizzes that you would incorporate before each week's class. If, for example, your students read the chapter or mastered the answers before uh, before their class, they would get uh, some free points. So would earn through points. Of course, these quizzes are low stakes assessments. They should be implemented consistently in each module, in each learning unit. And this strategy works especially well in flipped classes. Another interesting example is asking students to record podcasts. Podcasts should replace, would replace in this case, a short paper or a report. Why is it sneaky? Well, because students don't feel well, at least that's the uh, goal, that students wouldn't feel that they are doing any work. Because when you ask somebody to write a report or a paper uh, and it's a written assignment, it gives you some anxiety. At least that's what happened to me when I was asked to write reports and papers. But when you give students the same assignment, but uh, instead of asking them to write a report, you ask them to record the podcast, then it becomes something different because of the format, because of the medium that was suggested. That's maybe a way to diversify your assessments, your assignments, and give students an opportunity to express the ideas in a different way, creative way. Or another example from the article is assigning students to complete a peer review on the discussion board. That's another way to incorporate assessments. Who says that you're the only one who should be doing evaluation? Well, ask students to evaluate and review and comment on each other's posts when they're engaged on the discussion board. Using, uh, If you're using Canvas, you can always set up peer reviews by clicking on the, uh, there is a box when you are designing your discussion boards in Canvas. There is an option to uh, turn on peer reviews and it's a, it's a very, simple feature that can turn your discussion board into something interesting and creative. Well, basically, when we think about assessments, we really need to think beyond tests and exams. Authentic assessments can be much more effective because they encourage students to demonstrate what they've learned in a variety of different ways. Usually, tests, pretty straightforward, right? There are some questions, and even if you incorporate different types of questions, it's still pretty straightforward. Its format doesn't allow for a lot of creativity, well, at least in my opinion. And when you incorporate different types of activities that would allow your students to express what they know in a variety of different ways, you are honoring your students' learning styles and preferences, so you're following the principles of the universal design for learning. Well, examples, again, I've uh, found them in some in the articles that I have used to prepare for this presentation. So I just wanted to highlight some of my favorite activities that jumped out when I was reviewing those articles and resources. A series of quizzes or chapter tests instead of comprehensive high stakes tests or exams. Though I did say just a minute ago, don't use tests or maybe go beyond tests. And here I'm using tests as an example. Well, the difference is this is the low stakes and it's used not like an exam, but it's used more of a comprehension check. For example, if you assign your students to watch a lecture, video lecture, or assign chapters from the textbook, you could incorporate those quizzes and you can make them automated. It's very easy to do in Canvas. And you would have those comprehension check, for example, quizzes every time you assign students students some reading. And um, it's low stakes, but uh, you would need to assign points. So students would take those assessments seriously. And then uh, by the end of the quarter it would be culmination of all activities and assignments that your students have worked on. And that would count towards the final grade. Another great example of assessments that are uh, 
fun and very useful, in my opinion, are portfolios. The idea behind portfolios is that students compile their best work from the term and then put together a portfolio. What I like about portfolios is that they will help students to gather their best work from different courses, classes that they've taken throughout their studies, and they can use them to maybe after they graduate and uh, when they apply for jobs, many jobs require you to show your portfolio samples of activities that you've done, something that you've done for when you were working at different organizations. When you're a student, you just graduated, you may not have such portfolio because applying for your first job. But when you um, collect some idea, uh, some work that you've done when you were taking classes, that could be an excellent way to incorporate portfolio. So think about that as a way for students to uh, gather their best work to showcase their knowledge. And for you, of course, it is a, a evaluation piece. It is an assessment. Another way to diversify your assessments is by maybe all offering oral exams or group presentations, asking you students to do group presentations. For example, you can use Zoom and ask students to get together to do a presentation to a class, or you can use Zoom and uh, have an oral exam where students would talk about answers and explain concepts. Just there are different ways to incorporate uh, synchronous tools, Zoom and uh, even asynchronous video or audio recordings in Canvas that could be done easily. Uh, for example, on the discussion board, instead of asking students to write their post and submit it, you would give students a choice to whether to write it, post it in, as a written post, or record the answer as a video or an audio recording. And more examples. I found these examples from the resource that was developed by the Center for Innovative Teaching, IU, so it's Diana University. And I really like these examples because they demonstrate how you can diversify your assessments with different disciplines. For example, nursing. Provide a case study of a patient and ask students to assess and create a plan of care. You could put together a case study for your students based on some real situations that happen in hospitals and clinics, and students can uh, work on that case. That is such a wonderful way to engage in problem solving and project solving business. You can ask students to develop a business plan, a marketing plan, or a sales plan for an imaginary company in a student's area of interest. Again, this could go into students' portfolio. This is actually a wonderful example of something that could go to students' portfolios and be a part of their portfolios. And then they can even use it when they uh, graduate and apply for jobs. Computer science, troubleshoot a pro problematic piece of code, develop a website or an app. Again, excellent example how your students can uh, solve something that could be a real problem and uh, develop something unique and interesting. And of course, they could use it in a, as an example and put it in their portfolios. Public affairs and service, uh, service learning courses. Con, for example, consider how a community agency might be impacted by a particular challenge. Budget cuts, infrastructure outage, public health crisis, and so on. Again, that is an excellent opportunity to engage your students in project-based learning and problem-based learning. That could go into their portfolio. Just an excellent way to help students apply what they've learned. Biology, chemistry, students can be a, you can ask students to draw a diagram on how to, uh, how a student process uh, works. And then in history, you can ask students to do a role play on a particular event in history or describe what might have happened if one element of a historical event had changed. So fun way to engage students in, in evaluation and application and even creation. 
And then I prepared several examples, again, from the resources and the literature that I've reviewed. And I found several really interesting examples of how different instructors created their activities. In this particular, in this particular slide, it is a discussion board. And uh, we are going to talk about scaffolding. These examples demonstrate how to write different types of prompts and questions and encourage your students to apply their thinking, evaluation, and engage them in application. And the scaffolding piece is how the instructor writes those instructions for the students so they're easy to follow and students know exactly what they're expected to do. That's the scaffolding piece. I really liked uh, this example and there are two other slides we'll, we'll have similar examples and we'll talk about in instructions. In this particular discussion activity, the learning objective is remembering and understanding. It's kind of on the low level of Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, students are asked to demonstrate their understanding of uh, some course concepts in a small group format. This particular example of the discussion board is worth 20 points and this is how the instructions are written. Post your response is under your group thread and the questions are what is your definition of disability uh, what does disability mean to you how did you come to understand disability this way what experience do you have with a disability why did you receive decide to take this course this are uh, um, questions that really ask students to dig deep and share the experience so remember in uh, one of the first slides was about cheating that in online classes, the instances of academic cheating, according to some data, have increased. And by incorporating activities like this one and by wording questions this way, you would minimize cheating because here students need to share about their experiences, share their perspectives that are very, very unique. Every student would have a unique answer to this question. And I like how the instructor who wrote this prompt separated the initial post from the follow-up. So it says original response is due on Wednesday uh, at 11.59 p.m. And the, then after that, students are asked to reply to other posts and the instructions are two responses are due by Sunday. So by separating your initial response, uh, initial post on the follow-up and giving deadlines for each part is going to help students structure their work and will in, uh, encourage students to participate in a discussion because it just gives them time from Wednesday to S Sunday to look at each other's posts and really engage in that interesting and dynamic discussion among themselves. Another example of a discussion board activity that actually is on a, a little bit in the learning objective as uh, analyzing and evaluating, which is a higher level of Bloom's taxonomy. And again, I really like how um, uh, this instructor wrote the instructions in the prompt is very, very interesting. And this example is taken from the resource that I mentioned before. And the link is also listed on the last slide of this presentation deck. This, this discussion board allows students to analyze and evaluate a simulation case. Students also have a chance to review different programs from their peers and evaluate their effectiveness. So instructions, read through the materials posted under the under discussion board simulation materials, find which program you've been assigned to, and explore how your program is represented or not represented on the website, Facebook, face, Facebook page, and Twitter feed. After your exploration, please answer the following questions. Questions are, based on the course readings, how effective are the city's website, Facebook page, and Twitter feed? How could your program better communicate its mission, performance, and needs to the public and other programs and policy, city policymakers? Well, what I really like about this, I'm not sure which course it is, but what I really like about this example is that it's using a real website 
from official website, Facebook page and Twitter. And the instructor is asking students to do this analysis and evaluation using the questions that they listed here. And students are engaged in analysis of uh, something real that really exists and they apply everything that they've learned in this course to do this analysis. I just thought it is such a wonderful way to help students learn the concepts that are being introduced in the course and also apply them by doing this evaluation and analysis. It is a very good example of that authentic assessment. And another example is uh, also the learning objective is evaluation. Here, students are asked to write a draft paper and then conduct peer critique in small groups. And then feedback received from peers will help improve the quality of their final paper. And instructions are first share your rough draft, post a copy of your rough draft by replying to your group's thread and the due date is Sunday. And the second part is post your peer review feedback. You need to complete the peer review of another student's rough draft by uh, Sunday then of Sunday of week five, and the previous one was week four. Just a wonderful way to incorporate clear instructions. I just really like how the instructions are worded. Every phase of the project very clearly stated. So the first part is due on Sunday of week four. The second part is due on Sunday week five. There's enough time for students to engage with each other, do those peer reviews. And just like that, it's a peer review example where students are actually evaluating each other's work and then use the feedback received from the peers to improve the quality of their final paper. And of course, I don't want to get about tests. Tests, uh, quizzes, final exams, are important as long as it's not the only way to assess your student uh, learning and um, there are some tips that I wanted to share that I find in different resources and articles that can help you mitigate student cheating and just make sure that students are successful. One way to mitigate cheating is by creating groups of questions and there's a tutorial I included on how to do that, but you can, you can set it up in such a way that Canvas kind of pulls them randomly. So you will create groups of questions and have a canvas pool randomly from each group so that each student will see a unique set or order of questions. You can set it up this way in Canvas. I included a tutorial that gives instructions how to do that. Another way to ensure integrity of your tests is to perhaps restrict access. There are many ways to do that. So you can use adapting, uh, adjusting release or setting up a time limit for the quiz. I personally don't like setting up time limits for quizzes, but I just wanted to include um, this option on this slide because technically you could do that, but pedagogically I'm against it. But again, it's just my personal opinion. You could set up a time limit for the quiz. I, I hear there's a link to the tutorial how to do that. Another way to mitigate, uh, to minimize cheating and ensure integrity is perhaps asking your students to agree to an honor pledge. Uh, some research suggests that reminding students of an academic integrity policy or asking students to affirm an academic integrity pledge at the beginning of an exam results in less self-reported cheating. And some uh, a tip for math uh, disciplines, if you use formula questions, what you can do is, well, Canvas quizzes would allow instructors to create quiz questions that use very vari variables and they can present each student with a unique uh, question or answer based on the rules. And again, the tutorial, I've never done that, so I'm, I don't teach math, but I included a tutorial that highlights, that gives instructions how to do that. And other strategies for mitigating cheating, minimizing cheating and ensuring integrity, if you use tests and exams in your courses is perhaps uh, when you develop tests 
in questions for your exams, create questions that are uh, more of an analysis and synthesis and ask students to evaluate information. Types of questions that would be hard to just uh, find answers to by doing Google search, for example. Diversifying the question types, for example, including multiple choice and true false answer questions, open-ended questions that could also make your exam more interesting, more comprehensive, and uh, help minimize cheating. When integrating or writing open open-ended questions can encourage your students to explain their responses using specific examples from the research or lectures that they completed throughout the course, referencing the examples that are unique to their understanding of the course material. And you can also ask your students maybe record their responses instead of submitting them in writing. Ask students if they could record, do audio recording, for example. It's a feature in Canvas that you can easily uh, you, uh, incorporate. Basically, ask your students to record their answers where they are explaining how they got to this answer, referencing certain research lectures uh, from the course, also referencing their experiences that are unique to their understanding of the course material. Another way to, um, to ensure integrity is making maybe to do one question at a time. That's just an, an option that uh, you, could, you could also do.